Hi folks, thank you for joining me. 10th of July, it's about 5.30, 5.30 in the afternoon. I fired this kiln, you saw me pack it yesterday, I fired it yesterday. Alright, I'm now going to unpack it. Let's do it. I did have a sneak peek in here earlier today. Um, but I've not taken anything out. Whoa. Let's have a look. Let's have a quick look here. So you can see, if you remember how I packed this kiln, how now everything now has shrunk back, you see, quite a lot. A lot of these pieces were packed fairly tight. Well, they weren't really, really tight. You know, we were making, allowing for a little bit of flame circulation around the pots. Nevertheless, considerably more space now, as you can see. Okay, so. I'll do what we usually do, we'll take the pots out, we'll comment on them and then I will take them over and put them on the wear board. Maybe we'll get a bit extra light on in here, not that it's going to make a big deal of difference but... So, now all these pots are available so if there's any that grab you as I show them to you just freeze that frame grab the time stamp and um, quite a nice uh, celadon and the iron oxide thickness quite quite good quite like that that's what we're aiming at fairly nice and fairly nice and consistent good melt good reduction the clay body Good oxide. Nothing to complain about there. So I've got a few of the, a few of these guys, Celadon tankards. I do have an order for a couple. These have come out though quite quite nice. A little patch of glaze missed there, but no big deal. No big deal in my book. So, now, oh, here's another tankard, the milky. Milky glaze. And I've got some of these tea bowls with that hackamy and the spatter. You see the spatter, bits of cobalt, rutile, etc. All right. Oh yeah, some of these work a bit experimental. Here's one of these experimental ones. Well, if you remember, I brushed on a, some iron oxide and then I put the, the white slip with that round sponge blobs. And then we glazed it and then we put the, added the iron oxide into the, into the decoration there. Yeah. Uh, 
Oh yeah, this one had um, some chromium oxide. This green is chromium oxide. Blue wash background. Yeah, I quite like that. Oh, now this is one that um, had an iron oxide wash underneath and I added the... Now I don't know if you remember when I was doing that I I said to you oh, I should have done... I should have... I let them dry out too much if you remember and then I added the white slip. I said that we might have some issues. Now I don't know if you can see that. There's a little bit of a lifting going on there. You can see that there and a little bit there. So where the white slip, where I applied it, where it was a little thicker, it's tried to, it's sort of trying to, to lift off. Yeah, I still like it though. Okay. Can we get that shelf out? Everyone and everybody and his brother has a motorcycle, it seems, in Milheim. Let's put this over here, a bit more on top of. So remember, when you're going to take a shelf out, rock it a bit like this in case there are any props that are stuck. Okay, and carefully lift it out. Be careful if you've got a thermocouple like I have here. Let's have a look, let's see, let's have a look at the, the cone. Alright, there it is. That is cone 10. So we'll, we'll put him up there with the others. I always put a row of cones, I always put the last firing right on the end, do you see? So that I... I can review etc. The last firings. Yeah, it just helps you me to see a little bit about consistency. Right. right. Down on the very sides here I had these guys. They've come out. Oh, that one's got it's got a little crack in it. It was funny, you know, when I was handling it, when I was putting him in, I thought I felt I thought I felt, as I was picking it up, I thought I felt it go And sure enough, it's got a very small a little crack. Now that, that, that is one of the things to be aware of with raw pots. They're not bisque. They are a little bit... Otherwise good. So let's see what we've got down in here. What have we got? Yes, if there's any of these pots that grab you, you like them, take a time stamp. A little bit to grind off there. Bit of bat wash. Otherwise quite nice. They're, they're, they're coming out quite nicely these tankards these days have to say I'm more than happy with the results oh. it's a nice little bud vase cobalt wash with iron oxide brush work over the top yep Nice. And another one. Yeah, quite acceptable. Quite acceptable indeed. All right, let me just go and put those away. And we'll do a count up, see how many pots we get. 
the end of this firing. Right. Are we in the picture? Are we in the picture? Let's have a look. Yes. All right. Here we have a T-bowl. Yes. So having the uh, having first a wash of iron oxide uh, underneath the 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 white white combed slip that I've got. You can see it adds a bit of contrast, doesn't it? So I think that's actually quite successful. It works. Um, yeah. Yep. Happy with that. What is this one? Oh yeah, look. Now, now we see. You see, you see that there. How that's that's lifting off there. Look. In fact, that's just gonna. It's just gonna peel off. Some of these. So the white slip you see that I put applied when the pot was too dry. And. Um, you see, you see the result there of that of, the, of this. Look, look at that! The whole thing is just flaking off in my hand. It didn't, it didn't, didn't adhere very well to the to the clay body. Let's have another look here. So, yeah, this one this one has worked okay though it hasn't lifted. Quite nice. Yeah, quite nice. Happy with that. So yeah, we 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 make mistakes. You know, you got to like analyze and see what you did wrong. So here. Again, uh, iron oxide first, then the Hakami slip over the top, combed, which I th I'm happy with the way that's come out, I think, yep. And then I did these little, these, these marks. And then I added a little dot there, which is actually was a mixture of rutile and, and iron oxide. But I think the thickness was a little too thick, it's come out a little matte look. It's a little matte looking, like it's not really melted. So, okay, something to take note of. Um, again, the same treatment, Hakami with the iron oxide, and then I applied this chromium. I think I've, what I'm going to do in the, in the future is I'm going to have, I'll mix up in a small bottle, I think some of the actual base glaze and then I'll add a little bit of the chromium to the base glaze and have that in a little squeezer bottle with a you know with a point with a like a dropper bottle thing so in other words I'm taking the the chromium and I'm mixing it in with some of the some some of this glaze I think it's a little again that it looks like it's just a touch, just a very touch dry, like it hasn't quite kind of fused properly. It's okay. I'm not. I'm not disappointed with it. In fact, I like the piece. I'll be honest. It's a small. It's just a small detail. I'm being. I'm being hypercritical, but we have to be, don't we? It's funny though with the 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 cobalt, which is fl flicked on in exactly the same way. Uh, that has fused in and is all melted over, but but the cobalt is sort of seems like it's like it's not quite properly melted in. But it, I mean, it has melted, but it's not. It's just matte, you know, instead of gloss. Yeah, that's a nice piece, actually. I like that. T 
quality bowls. And last, lastly, again, same idea. I I, I like a lot the 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 treatment of um, uh, slip. Oh, interestingly, this one had a cobalt underneath. Then, if you can see here, just around the base, actually, instead of instead of instead of iron coming through, I actually did a cobalt wash, which again, it was just experimental. Um, don't know if I'd do that again, but I mean, no, it's okay, it's fine. Just gives a very slight. Oh, that one's got a crack. Look, see that there? Got a crack there. Whoa, would you believe it? It's funny, it's not cracked on the outside. It's just got like a what appears to be a, a kind of a hairline crack on the inside, but on the outside it doesn't show. Oh, well, there you go. So there we have it. Okay, let's get those, get them situated over there. Then we'll count up. So what we can do with all, all of our pots is, you know, where they've been sitting on the shelf, they have these little marks basically just grind your bases together okay that's all you have to do right righty ho right there see how many pots we've got here uh, I think it's got a bit less than 25 this time let's see two four six eight ten 12, 16, 18, 20, 24, 24 pieces, 24 pots. Yes, okay, there they are folks. If any of those grab you, or you like them, you want to buy them, what you need to do, grab a timestamp, as I told you, write to me include the timestamp so I can see which one it is and so long as nobody else has bought it it's yours all you need to do is mail me a check for uh, the tankards are 38 the bud vases will be 32 and those tea bowls will be 48 so 38 for the tankards 32 for the bud vases and 48 for the tea bowls. Okay, great stuff. Thanks for joining us, folks. I hope you find that informative, interesting, educational. <laughs> you learn, don't you? Every single firing, every single firing, you learn something new. And you think to yourself, hmm, got to make a little adjustment here, you know, a little adjustment there. And, um, that's why, if you remember, I said to you, look, if you're doing, if you're being a bit experimental, don't do a whole board, you know, if you're not quite sure. Just do two or three, put them in, fire them, and then analyze them and see, you know, what adjustments you need to make. Because probably, more than likely, you're going to have to make some adjustments. So, there it is. Go to my website, simonleachpottery.com. Um, come and join us for a workshop we've got workshops listed there just come um, I'm going ahead with my workshops as usual and I've also got zoom clay if you want teaching direct to your wheelhead direct to your studio direct to your group if you have a group you know, I've got to do, on the 22nd of July, I've got to do a group. I think we have a dozen people. I'm doing like a zoom, a zoom in on that. Uh, actually, it's going to be really me doing a demonstration with sort of like questions and answers interactive. So if that interests you and you want 
you want me to do that with you, just write to me, whether it's on an individual basis or whether it's a group, just write to me. We'll work out something. Okay folks, that's it from Milheim, Pennsylvania. Keep practicing. I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye-bye now.